on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. You can now spend your Ether anywhere that accepts Visa thanks to an upgrade to the 10x card and introducing Plasma, an upgrade to the Ethereum network that could enable billions of transactions per second. All of that coming up on today's edition of the Cryptoverse, so stay right there. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse. Your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney, the founder of Cryptoversity, the online school where you can learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. Find out more at Cryptoversity.com. So let's get into the first story. 10x adds support for Ethereum. If you don't know what 10x is, it's a Visa card that you load cryptocurrency onto and then you can spend it anywhere that accepts Visa. So that's cool because it means that the merchant doesn't have to support Bitcoin, your cryptocurrency or Dash payments. They don't care. They just accept Visa. You spend your cryptocurrency. Bob's your uncle. So this email I received yesterday, actually, and it told me two things. Number one, I can now deposit Ethereum onto my 10x card and spend it anywhere that accepts Visa. And number two, they said that their previous email, which said that you can also deposit Ethereum-based ERC20 tokens onto your card, was incorrect. You can't do that yet. Uh, they're still working on it, but for now, they've just added Ethereum. Now, the price of 10x tokens has increased significantly recently. And I have a lot of confidence in the 10x project itself. And I can say that purely on the basis of Julian's leadership and the team that he has assembled. So I could, I'd have confidence if that's the only thing that they had. They do happen to have a good product as well. But I think the team and Julian's leadership is going to be the key to their success. And I'm not surprised that their price of their token has rocketed recently. So how about we do a little demo with the 10x card? What I have up here is an Android emulator because I don't have an Android phone. I have an iPhone. So this is uh, the app I've talked about on previous occasions. If you're an Apple user, because 10X haven't released the Android, sorry, the iOS app for the 10X card yet. So I use this BlueStacks application on my computer, which kind of emulates an Android phone. So as you can see right now, I've got 0 0.0035 Bitcoin on the card, which is currently worth nine pounds and 36 P. And that, um, that I can now go and spend that in a store in the UK using the 10X card that I have in my wallet. But what's happened now is there's an ETH uh, button that has appeared inside the app, which I can switch to. And at the moment, the balance is zero. Now, if I click deposit, it will take me through to the, well, actually ask me for my PIN number, which I'll just turn that screen off for a second while I enter the PIN number. There we go. And then I'll bring you back. Now it's going to say I'll share my wallet address. Make sure I click on Ethereum. Click copy address. I'm going to go to my MetaMask here in my browser. I'm going to send, paste the Ethereum address in there. Now I did notice a bug here, as you can see. When I copied the address from the uh, 10x app, it's included ETH colon at the beginning. So that's not a valid Ethereum address. I'll have to delete the ETH and the colon. And it says, how much do I want to send? I'll send 0.1 Ether. Click next in my MetaMask. It's going to say the transaction fee is 22 pence and the overall transaction is about 24 pounds. So I'll submit that to the Ethereum network. It's going to send it to my 10x card. Now, what I'll do is, well, I was going to look at it on the Ethereum network. I don't like this about MetaMask. It uses some weird block explorer. I'd much rather it used Etherscan because you can see it in real time. It actually sits there with the wheel processing so you can see actually when the transaction goes through. Um, I've included the standard fee there with which MetaMask recommended. So I would ordinarily expect this to go through within a few seconds. We're almost up to 
32 seconds already um, without a confirmation. Let's check in with the app itself. If I go back to the main screen, what should happen as soon as that transaction confirms is the amount in pounds will show up inside of my 10x wallet. However, it's still processing on Etherscan here. We're up to 52 seconds, and that's still pretty slow. It's interesting that we're going to get onto Ethereum scaling in the in the next part here when we talk about the Plasma network. Okay, finally, after about a minute and a half, that transaction was confirmed. So I can come back to BlueStacks now, and there we go. 0.1 Ether has appeared inside my wallet. Now that's pretty good. The fact that the, it only took a minute and a half to confirm that Ethereum transaction means that if I needed to spend some money right now, I'd only have to wait a minute and a half to load some more money onto the 10x card versus Bitcoin, which would take you know 10 minutes on average. Now, the other key thing I need to point out here is there's a button right below the balance that says link to payments. So the question is, how does the 10x card know which type of cryptocurrency you want to spend. This is how. At the moment, you'll notice if I switch to BTC mode, it says wallet linked. So if I spend now, it's going to take it from my Bitcoin balance. If I click on it, Ether, and then click link to payments, after two seconds, boom, it's now linked it to Ether. So when I now spend my next amount on my 10x card, it will take it from my Ethereum balance. And as time goes on, they're going to add support for Dash and other cryptocurrencies and so on. So I'm, I quite like using this BlueStacks app. You can, you can emulate any of the uh, Android apps on it. So it's pretty good. If there's, if there's an app you want to use that's not available on iOS, you can use this BlueStacks app. It's pretty, pretty good. So the link to payments button was the key thing I wanted to show you there. In terms of 10X's roadmap, Let's go over to their development blog and see what's coming up. So this was published a few days ago, like four or five days ago. So they're saying that they're working on the web app. So when the web app launches, we won't have to use the BlueStacks thingy. Um, no matter what device you've got, you'll be able to log into the web app and do the process that I've just showed you. They're saying the closed beta will begin on the 14th of August, which is coming up in three days time. And then they'll do a gradual rollout. And then they have got, um, further implementation with exchanges coming up. The iOS app is in closed beta. It says it will begin on the 21st of August and then we'll roll out. And then finally, they're talking about other currency rollouts, such as Dash is being tested internally, and then they're gonna roll out support for ERC20 tokens. Do you know what's kind of odd? Is if you owned some 10X tokens, the pay currency, you could load that onto your 10X card and then spend it. That's a really, that's a, that's a mind screw in it because you're using the 10X token and spending it with the 10X card. I don't know. That's just kind of a funny logical puzzle in my mind. It's kind of my sense of humor. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about 10X for today. Project going in the right direction, if you ask me. Um, I'm going to continue to experiment with my 10X card and uh, see, yeah, experience it as a user. All right, moving on. Introducing the Plasma white paper. That's over on, oh, what have I done with it? There it is, plasma.io. It's a very basic site right now, but um, it links to the white paper that has been written. And it has been written by Vitalik Buterin, the creator of Ethereum, and Joseph Poon, one of the two guys that wrote the 2016 white paper on the Bitcoin Lightning Network, which I will just display here. This is from the 14th of January, 2016. So these guys have come together to write a paper on Plasma, an upgrade to Ethereum that could potentially enable billions of transactions per second. EOS may very well be on the way, but by the time it launches, it's not going to be competing with the same Ethereum that existed when the EOS project was originally conceived. So there's still everything to play for. And also I have to be careful when I'm talking about these things because it, it's important the way we frame them. So it's important how we talk about them because language will, will frame the things. It's quite easy to slip into the paradigm where it's, it's almost like we're assuming it's a winner take all game. This is not the case, right? Which is why it's not really fair 
to call EOS an Ethereum killer. I can easily see a future where EOS and Ethereum coexist. I mean, even at this very early stage in blockchain technology, we've got dozens of projects working on connecting different blockchains together. So by the time that EOS actually launches, and by the time Ethereum and EOS become like de facto platforms, it'll be easy to get the two networks to talk to each other. It'll probably be as easy as it is today to connect two different web apps together. I mean, that's super easy to do nowadays. Anyway, Plasma itself, notice how they are continuing to use uh, gas as a naming convention. I thought that was kind of clever. This can be initially understood to be a lightning network, but for smart contracts on Ethereum. Now I say initially because there's a lot more to it than that. Um, and I'm just using that as a sound bite so that we can just get our head around it initially. And the other metaphor that I've come up with to help me understand how Plasma is going to be structured is like a hierarchy of smart courts, you know, like a legal system. So you'd have the supreme smart court at the very top, and that would be the main Ethereum blockchain. And then below that, you'd have these lower smart courts at different levels that would take smart contract processing off the main network and then submit the results back, just like the Lightning Network is going to do for Bitcoin transactions. And just like the Lightning Network, if in this system you suspect someone is trying to cheat you, you can always just refer your case to the Supreme Smart Court, which again is the main Ethereum blockchain, and it will instantly be settled just as if it was a main transaction on the main network. So you've always got the Supreme Court settling things if anyone in the Plasma network misbehaves. So that's the metaphor I'm going with for the time being. As I study Plasma more and more, I'll see if that uh, metaphor holds and is still valid. But let me know in the comments below if you think this is a helpful framework for understanding Plasma. And if not, perhaps help me to refine it so that we can get people understanding this stuff uh, more easily. All right, guys, that's all for today. I've, I've been Chris Coney. Thanks very much for joining me. If you like this episode, hit that like button. If you're new around here, then get subscribed. And if you'd like access to my very best material, such as my structured online courses, which will teach you things like how to make and save money with Bitcoin, check out Cryptoversity.com. All right, guys, that's all for today. I'll be back on Monday with another edition of the Market Roundup and another edition of this news and commentary show. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying, Bye for now.